The 2019 Game Developers Conference will feature an exhibition called GDCDEDICATEDTOGAMES that you saw tentative control schemes on interactions. Goddard Sutra will be talking to the developers of each of the games that have been selected for the showcase. Through NCLIMB reaching as players rapidly tagging on a circular rope to climb a wall, hopping from side to side to avoid hazards that dangle along their path. Gana Sutra spoke WITHTAKAHI Romy is one developer of Ruins Climber to talk about designing a controller and then creating a game around it. The difficulties of making a controller with rope and the appeal of creating games that are as fun to spectate as they are to play. I am Taka Hero on one. I made this project alone. For about 20 years, I have been making browser games. I wanted to make a game about playing something. When I thought about something from Tor Pool, I thought of the rope. The rope made into a ring shape, so it can be pulled endlessly. I do not want to provide a description about how to play my games at game shows because it's so busy. So, I'd always design games that do not need a description. If the game character makes the same gesture as the player, explanation is not necessary. Through as Climber was made with Unity and Arduino. The rope was made by rolling a towel. The frame uses a water pipe. The rope had to pull freely with a light force, and it had to be durable. I made four prototypes. I always make a controller at first. Next, I make a game for this controller. So, the game design is determined naturally. I think that unique controllers can entertain it only the players, but also the audience. It is very important for the audience to have fun. I like to watch everyone's reaction at the event, and it is fun to provide play that you have never experienced yet. At DICE Summit 2019, Sean Layden, chairman at Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios, offered a brief survey of PlayStation's past, present, and future, and doubted a quality above all approach to shipping video games. During his keynote, Layden, who's been involved with the PlayStation business since the brand's inception, unexpectedly spent time talking candidly about the PlayStation 3 a console that would serve as a low point in the PlayStation business. PS3 was a stark moment of hubris. Our Icarus moment, he said. For our business, the fall was sharp. Layden admitted that Sony did not listen to developers or to players closely enough. A high price point and a punishing developer environment were major factors in taking PlayStation down a few notches. Sony was able to ride the path with the PlayStation 4, which was designed with close input from game developers, and led the PlayStation business to rebound from this three as under performance, Layden took plenty of time to tout Sony's successes, from his like God of War and Horizons Zero Dawn, but also praised competitors and partners, describing game development as a creative-led endeavor that needs to be balanced carefully as a business. He noted the SWITCHS massive success, which caught naysayers by surprise. Nintendo took a massive risk when they brought Switch to market. As I have said before, never underestimate Nintendo, he said. Layden took time to praise Microsoft and its innovative adaptive controller, which is designed for players with limited mobility. He hinted that Sony needs to also broaden the tent and make games accessible to everyone, and that Sony should let from the front in terms of expanding its market beyond non-traditional audiences. This is important work, he said. Regarding accessibility and games, Layden said, other industry is at an inflection point. Gamers do not grow out of gaming anymore.
Well, do not see games as childish things that need to be put away. For Sony, he said PlayStation's game development strategy is simply cognitive above all. He reiterated his sentiments from a recent interview that Sony will continue to release fewer games than in the past, but they plan on making sure those games are a success. He also said development of new intellectual properties is necessary, even if extremely difficult, as it takes more time. We have to give it more time, he said. A group of Sonic Mania developers, including game director Christian Whitehead, have joined forces to establish a brand mood. The Tick Game Studio, dubbed Evening Star Studio, the new opening is headquartered in Los Angeles and was formed with the remit of designing fresh, fun games which will stand the test of time. Whitehead will serve as Evening Star's creative director and lead engine architect, with the studio looking to use the retro engine, a rebranded as the Star Engine. He designed as its primary game engine. He will be joined by fellow Sonic Mania developers Tom Fry, art director, Hunter Bridges, technical and audio director, and Brad Flick, design director, while veteran producer Dave Padilla will lead Evening Star as CEO. Being a boutique game studio has a specific meaning. Every member pursues the goal to make their own great games. By encouraging strong technical foundations in every discipline, members are given a voice and latitude to impact games in unique ways. Read the Evening Star website. By reinvigorating gaming histories, more cunning techniques, the team boldly explores directions long since left behind, with that driving approach and the proprietary engine and toolset. Evening Star has developed an innovative workflow of which minimizes the barriers between ideas and execution. Artificial intelligence is an endlessly exciting and advancing field. And at the 2019 Game Developers Conference of this March, you will have unique opportunities to study how AI is being used to push all sorts of boundaries in game design, notably. The GD 2019 I Summit is jam-packed with intriguing and in-depth sessions which offer you an inside look at key architectures and issues within successful games. Join top game I programmers for panels and lectures, in addition to conversations, debates, and rants on how game I can move forward. While the summit is targeted to programmers who want in-depth discussions, anyone interested in what I can offer the next generation of games will gain invaluable perspective and insight. There are also loads of interesting eye focused talks outside the summit that you will not want to miss. For example, in Battlefield V, I dialogue with Dice Simon Lindstag and Justin. Langley will cover the ideas and philosophies behind creating believable. I dialogue in a B A T T and the F I L E D G A M A set in World War II, as well as the process from recording to mastered content in Frostbite. Making your eye characters sound believable and authentic is no mean feat. And together, Langley and Lindskog will walk you through the UGHTH implementation process, starting from the results of Battlefield 1 to a more evolved, flexible, and easier system. This session will share a creative approach that combines both audio and programming skills, stretching the boundaries of Frostbite to support the creative design for the dialogue and in enhance the immersivity. Using speech recognition for more natural player eye interactions, you will get fresh insight into how complementary eye tech can help your games feel more real and alive. In this talk, Square Enix eye engineer Kautier Boda will show you how to build a speech recognition pipeline to promote further interactivity between the user and the agents. You will learn to make a voice recognition system, which supports multiple languages.
while allowing a large variety of phrasing. You will also learn some methods to improve spatial representation based interactions. While the original application is far weird, it can be applied to any game where there is a need for more immersive and interactive agents. Plus, Square Enix I engineer Kazuko Mana will be delivering an exciting talk at BD 2019 all about balancing nightmares. And I approach to balance games with overwhelming amounts of data.